growing up for me was not the best of times for me. I grew up in a household with five other women and my father. Um, growing up, we used to go on vacation about every year. We seemed like we, used to, we had a very good family. It was uh, all of us that got along really well. We, um, we never fought ever really. We used to go to church, but I was too young to ever really know what it was all about. I just kind of went there and complained that I was tired, I want to go home, I want to do this thing, that thing, instead of doing this. So eventually my family stopped going altogether, but it wasn't because we had given up on our faith, it's just because it was too much of a hassle for us, I guess, really. For me at that point, that was pretty much the extent of my relationship with the Lord. I um, was more interested in going home and playing video games. I didn't want to sit down and read a book. I wanted to play video games, go hang out with friends, and all those kind of things. Uh, from that point on, I just kept I just kept living in life as a normal kid. I used to go to school, learn learning math, English, all those things. Um, hung out with friends after school, and then we used to go on. You know, I used to hang out with my family a lot. We used to have dinner together all the time. Me, my four sisters, my mom, and my dad, and um, we used to just sit around and talk about our days. And my dad used to have the best stories. We used to talk about work all the time, and he used to tell us about this house that we were supposed to have before we moved here from Texas and he told us how he lost the bet and ended up losing the house. That, that was a really funny story for us. We always got a kick out of it. So when I was about eight years old, my life took a drastic change for the worse. I remember coming home from school one day with my mom and my sister Courtney in the car. And as soon as we got home, my mom took us upstairs to her room because she needed to talk to us about something. She sat us both down and looked at us directly in the eyes and she gave us some of the worst news that I think I've ever heard. She told us that my uh, father had gone on a trip to Texas and he probably wasn't going to be back for a long time. So I just passed it off as he was just on a vacation. I didn't really say much about it. At that point I was just upset that my father wasn't around anymore. He was the only other guy in the household. I didn't have anybody else to talk to anymore. I, mean, I used to hang out with my sisters, but I just didn't relate as well as I did with my father. So after a couple of weeks after he had been gone, I kept asking questions where he had, um, where he was and what he was doing and when he was going to be back. And finally my mom just couldn't handle it anymore and she told me the truth of, what, of where he was. She told me, she sat me down and told me that um, my father, while he was in Texas, had touched a little girl in an inappropriate place and that he was sent to jail and wasn't coming back for a long time. When I heard that, tears were just flowing out of my eyes like crazy. I couldn't stop them. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go to school the next day. I didn't want to hang out with friends. I didn't want to read or anything. I didn't want to play video games. I just cried. That's all that I did. I was just too upset to do anything. After a while, my mother wanted me to start taking therapy sessions to help me deal with this issue. And during those therapy sessions, my therapist actually suggested that I get involved in a church group. So we found a local church ministry around the area and we joined, and I got, I joined, me and my sister both did. So during that time, we used to go to church on Sundays with them, we used to go on retreats with them, we used to, I even went on a mission trip with them once. When I began high school, I was still strong in my faith with Jesus, I was still going to that church group, and I still, go on, I still went on trips with them. But um, when I was about 14 years old, my grandfather, um, let me in on a big secret that even my mother w was too afraid to share with me. He, he told me the full truth about what my father actually did. My grandfather told me that my father wasn't in jail for the reason that my mother had said. He told me that my father was in prison because he raped two of my sisters almost on a nightly basis back at home. And um, it was just shocking for me to hear to know that my father, the man who loved me since I was a baby, would do such a thing to two of my sisters and that he had done that while I was just sleeping upstairs and he would go downstairs almost every night and he'd rape two of my sisters. It was heartbreaking to hear that. I just remember having so many questions about my faith, like I was wondering why would God have this happen to me? Why would God give me a father like this, a man who does that? I just had so many questions about it. And because of all those questions, it overwhelmed me and I gave up on everything. I gave up on my school, I gave up on my friends, and ultimately I gave up on my faith. And after I gave up on all those things, I slipped into a dark depression. And for four years while I was in high school, I didn't do anything about it. 
I just kept living my days, going day by day, wondering what was going to come next, not getting any answers, just living a boring existence. During that time, I had no hope for what was going on. I did not care if I was going to graduate. I didn't care if I passed any of my classes. I just wanted to get done with high school and then wanted to get out of my house and get away from all of the painful memories that had been caused because of what my father did. By the time I eventually graduated high school um, and found out I was accepted to Northern Illinois University, um, I asked around to see if any of my other friends that I went to high school with were going there. I really found out that only one of my other friends from high school was going there. So we moved in and I helped her move in and we went and found we went to go find our classes one day. And as we were walking around, we saw the symbol for crew all around the floor. And I had no idea what it was. And I asked her what it was, and she gave me a very vague description as to what it was. And then she invited me to a party at the palace the, the coming weekend. And I said I would go, and I just wanted to figure out more of what it was. So she called up a friend who was part of crew and gave us a ride over to the palace. And while we were there, I met a whole bunch of people who later will affect my life greatly. While I was there, I also learned that it was a Christian organization, and from that point on, I decided I wanted to give my faith a second chance. I started going to the large group of Crew Live and on a weekly basis, and there we, we I listened to the stories that people would share, I listened to the, the sermon that whoever was speaking gave, we sang, I sang worship songs with everybody else, and it was a revitalizing experience. Um, singing worship songs has been one of my favorite things to do while we were there. I feel like that's my way of talking to the Lord the best. So after that, I also joined a Bible study. And with them, I learned more about the Bible than I've ever known. I've never actually read the whole Bible. And with them, I've actually had the initiative to read my Bible on my own. I remember one of the first Bible chapters that I ever read since being here was uh, Deuteronomy 31.8. And it says, um, the Lord himself goes before you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. And I remember thinking when I first read that, was during the time that I gave up on the Lord, He never gave up on me. And that was a really powerful thing for me to think about, and it has stuck with me ever since. And it's been, become one of my favorite Bible passages. God, to me, has just been the most amazing thing in my entire life. Um, he is the father to the fatherless, as one of my friends pointed out to me. He's also, his love never fails. He never gives up on you. And that is one of the most powerful things I think I've ever I've seen in scripture, that he never gives up on you. It's amazing to know that me, me meeting all of these people is all part of God's plan for me, because he really is the father to the fatherless. And that's, that's helped me so much. And he means a lot to everybody and crew. And his love never fails and he never gives up on any of us. My name is Fred Vargas, and I am second. Okay.